You don't have to be a scholar. You just have to be curious. You have to be right. curious about what somebody's thinking and what they're going through. And, and God will shepherd you through that process. What about leaders in the church at, at, any, at any level? Leaders, whether they're teaching a group, leading a group, they're, they're uh, leading a ministry of outreach, or pastors. What's, yeah. What is a charge that you would say to leaders today? So in um, 1 Peter 3.15, Peter was writing to the persecuted Christians in Asia Minor, and he said, always be ready to give an answer for the hope that lies within you. And he wasn't talking about telling your testimony. He just wasn't. That word reason is the word apologia. That's a courtroom term. Back in those days, you'd have the opportunity, if you were accused of a crime, to bring an apologia, to give a rational defense for why what you believe is true is true. That's the word that Peter uses there. And, he's, and, and so that's a charge we have as Christians, everyone. That's right. Everyone. It's, it's actually to Christians, period. To Christians. Now, leaders, interesting, if you go to Titus, one of the qualifications for being an elder in the church is that you can refute false doctrine. The only way you can refute false doctrine is if you know good doctrine, if you know what the real thing is. And that's actually a qualification for, for church leadership is that you have to be able, now that's gonna be something that's gonna happen intellectually, but you also have to be willing and able to be courageous enough to actually follow through and do that. And I think that's a, a huge charge for church leaders because I think that in the church at large, we've sort of like slipped that one under the, under the rug. Like, now, what I, what I wanna say too is that even for parents and church leaders, all of this might sound really overwhelming. You might be thinking, well, I don't have five years to go study apologetics right now, right? Well, you don't have to. And, and even parents and church leaders, if a kid comes to you as you're reading the Bible and they go, wait a minute, mom, that sounds kind of weird. Why, does it, why did he do that? What a great opportunity. That's your opportunity. Don't, you know, if you have an instinct to shut that down or be like, well, just because it said so or because of this, don't do that. Yeah, That's good. such a great opportunity. You good. can park there, camp there. Learn that for yourself. Go study that. Figure out why they did that. What was the context? Make sense of it so you can help walk your kids through that. Don't even move on until you solve that. That's Same good. with church leaders. You know, somebody comes to you with a question that you're like really overwhelmed by. Wow, I, I don't know how to answer that. Awesome, awesome opportunity to walk with that person as you learn the answer together. You don't have to be a scholar. You just have to be curious. You have to That's be right. curious about what somebody's thinking and what they're going through. And, and God will shepherd you through that process as well. So I don't want you to feel overwhelmed. Like, well, hey, I can't just go be a Bible scholar overnight. You don't have to. You just, you just have to want, to want to engage with it with somebody with the questions that they have. Mm -hmm.